So now it's your turn to talk to us about <laughs> where, where you're at with all of that. What do you want to build in the next six months? Ooh, I, I, I want to build, first of all, I want to say um, thank you for this opportunity. Like I wanted to just, and I was telling Colleen a little bit, but since the last retreat, I have had such a dramatic transformation and I was in therapy and my therapist is now saying, she's just like, I don't know who you are. I made her cry the other day. She's like, I've never cried in front of any of my clients before. Wow. And she, she's like, I want to go to a Kathy Heller retreat. And I was like, you should. <laughs> That's <laughs> so awesome. So I just wanted to say thank you because the transformation has been phenomenal. And that is I'm amazing to hear. <laughs> so. That's amazing here. I mean, I live for it literally. Like I think I I'm, I'm here for that. Like, I think that's wow. why I'm here, you know? Yeah. So yeah. it means so much to me. I, I just see such unnecessary suffering in all of us, myself included. And it's like, if yeah. you can just sort of pull the wool back, you go, Oh, that's, what's really going on. And then you're, you're, you, you're just okay. Cause you have access to right. this, this well being. And that's exactly, yeah. And that's exactly what's happened for me. And I think that's where I want to go in the next six months is to be able to share that. Okay. Like, with my book, Dear Mama Bear with a Fucked Up Hair, it's, it's basically, it's a picture book for mums and it's it's about depression. It's my journey of depression, you know, in being a mom and that pull of like, I adore my kids, but I've lost who I am. And so it's just this really, it's basically a poem. It's a fun, it's funny in parts, it's poignant, it's dark, but like every, every mom I've shown it to without fail, like, and people I don't know are like touched by it. And it was something that like I channeled. I didn't even, I wasn't planning to write this book. I literally just wrote it. And I don't know, you know, like I wrote it two years ago and thinking I'd hit my lowest point two years ago. That was complete bullshit because then last year we had two really big events happen with two of our sons. And so I had lot like when I came, when I found you or when you found me, I was at the lowest point I've ever been at in my life. And I had literally given up on my business because it wasn't doing anything. And I just felt like I don't have anything left to give as a mom. I don't have anything left to give as a person. Like, what the fuck am I doing? So I, I went back to a, a contract role. But then I, I took Abundant Ever After. And, oh, my God, stuff just started shifting. And I started really realizing I can be sad, but I can get all of that out of me. And I have all this yeah. to share. So... The book, it's not like, I don't want to just sell a book in six months, right? Like I, I, I am an author. I'm, I've stopped saying I'm trying to be an author. I'm an author. I've sold three, you know, I've published three children's books that are really good. I've, and now I've got this book on pre-order. What I'd like to see is like, I have a feeling about this book. I really do that. It's just going to, I think it's going to help like other women and other moms realize that they're not alone, you know, and that they can access that, that good feeling and they can, they can still have all the chaos and all the stuff that's going on, but they can access that good feeling, even if it's just a tiny bit every day. So I want to be able to spread that word. So I want to like make this book launch as successful as I can without wearing myself out and without like it being detrimental to me. I want it to be fun. Um, I'm in Susie's program, Susie Moore's. Um, she's so cute. She's amazing. And so I had a call with her the other day and she was like, pitch, pitch, pitch. You know, she's telling me like to pitch media and all these things. And, and that's awesome. And I'm actually going to event an event of hers in November, no, October, called Pitch Please in yeah. New York. So I'll yeah. be pitching the book and, and that there as well. How It will have just launched. Um, but there's something else missing. And so like there's that there's the there's the book and like I'd love advice on you know any any advice I've got you know Susie's given me advice of like you know get it in the hands of influencers and you know send as many copies as you can to to key influencers and things like that um but when I started my company that's really a hobby but it's going to be a business like it I called it Jotopia because I for me, it's a place like it's a mindset and it's a place that even in my darkest days, I can find the sun. And that's what the sun is all about mm -hmm. behind me. It's like it's that reminder that I can be going through shit, but I can still it's the darkness and light. I can still have that feeling. And so I I am a coach. I got my coaching certification and I just like whether I get a certification or not. I've been coaching women anyway in, you know, for years in my leadership role that I had in corporate America 
and I just, I like to make it fun. And so I came up with that. I don't, again, I would love advice on this. Like my whole thing is I'm living in Jotopia. Jotopia is not a place, it's a mindset. And it's like all the, you know, I'm working through what that means and how that, you know, what do I need in Jotopia to make me be the best version of me. And so this, again, it just came to me early on when I was d developing the company is like, let me find, let me help you find the you and your utopia. Um, and so I just, I don't know, I've been talking about it a bit more on my social media and things and just getting some traction to see if that even sticks with people or if people like it. Um, but it's just a fun way to like design, like, well, what would my world look like? What mantras do I have that hit me? What colors, you know, make me feel good? What smells, what sounds, what music, all that kind of stuff. And it's just a fun way to coach someone to get to that point where I am now, where I feel so much better, even though I'm still dealing with some pretty major things that are going on in my life. So totally uh, get it. All right. Here's my little riff for you. Okay. Okay. I didn't tell Colleen this. I always have my little riffs of the day. Um, <laughs> so everyone heard what I thought when I was watching the dolphins, you know, I had that riff and then yeah, yeah, yeah. yesterday I had a riff because I got in my own stuff and, uh, I told Colleen, I had this just beautiful, you know, meeting with an incredible studio. Right. And I started to have a conversation with myself about like overthinking that in some way. Yeah. So I like watched an interview with Steven Spielberg and Oprah from like the nineties and he had already won the Oscar for Schindler's List. He had done E.T. Draws, The Color Purple, like he had done all this stuff. And she's like, oh my God. And do you remember when we were on The Color Purple? And I'm like, what am I thinking? Like I wasn't on The Color Purple set. Like they're like, they're like buddies. <laughs> like, they're, like They're on the same level. Like then I saw an interview with him on NBC News from three years ago. He's talking about the 25th anniversary of Schindler's List. And he's amazing and he's intimidating like from an ego perspective and I'm like this is ridiculous what are you doing and then I started to have this little riff in my head which was why are you making this such a big deal and I'm saying this to you because we just talked for the first five six minutes about this book which we both know that's like you taking what you have inside of you pouring it into a thimble and saying good and it's like <laughs> what you have inside of you is an ocean. It's not a thimble. <laughs> and you know that. And so what you're doing is you're basically without being able to see it. This is where coaching is so helpful and friendships and things like that, because we have blinders. So yeah. you just moved us through this whole beautiful conversation. And what you basically said was, here's where I'm scared. So mm -hmm. I'm going to do this. <laughs> but what I really know I'm supposed to do is this, like go direct and just be, you know, be speaking, pouring over women, talking to people and where that's going to lead. It's going to be one-on-one -on -one coaching, group coaching, retreats, whatever it's going to be. But I'm just, there's a part of me that's like, you know, here I am on the map. You are here with the thimble. And I kind of know exactly <laughs> where this is. And actually I've seen, there's like this little like foxhole where if I walk through it, I get right there, but it's a little bit scary, right? So right. here's where I think it gets, it gets scary because it's this, this invisible, who am I to do this? Like to really claim this, you know, to really step into this, that we really know that that's what it is. Right. But that's the only thing that's here is how much are we willing to step into our ultimate truth and expansion and potential Yeah. at every moment. Right. And so my riff in my <laughs> mind was, hang on a second. This is what I started thinking. I was like, as cool and awesome as it is that Steven Spielberg made et and raiders of the lot well, no he didn't do that george lucas but the uh no he did isn't that um indiana jones he did all those movies yeah. jurassic park all that <laughs> stuff for him that was simple like mm. he was just making what he's supposed to make mm -hmm. like it's it's not a big deal it's him going yeah, my version of me not doing a thimble's worth of myself, but just offering myself is storytelling just like this on this level that has this kind of an impact. But what about a doctor who goes to work every day and comes home and says, I did six surgeries today. And people are like, oh, you saved six lives. And we are in our society impressed by that, right? But we don't right. put that on the same level as someone who wins an Oscar, which is just mm -hmm. interesting. Like this person saving life. Then I thought, 
what about honeybees? I'm like, honeybees, they do something epic. They make honey, which we now know, this is true about everything, but we know this specifically about honey, that if, if all the bees were gone, we wouldn't exist anymore. That's how important honey is. Right. But no one's jumping up and down and going, oh my God, it's so epic that you make honey. And they're not thinking about it. Right. They're just making just as makes- much honey as they can make all day long, da, 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 right? So I'm sitting here thinking, this is not a big deal. This is literally your job and you know it and you have insight. And the reason you're in pain is that gap. Mm-hmm. Our pain is all the hemming and hawing and resistance around This was my assignment and I'm aching because what we crave most is to give fully. We want to fully give our expression away. It's like no guitar wants to be holding a potted plant. It's not meant to, that hole in the middle is meant for resonance. It's not meant to hold (laughs) anything physical. So if you used it as a pot holder, the guitar is so unhappy. It's like, this is not my job, right? (laughs) And it's also not meant for you to have this Steinway piano for you to pluck one note on it once a year. It's like, I'm a Steinway. Like, please put a concert pianist on this bench and play me. And it's not complex. I'm meant to be played this way. I Mm -hmm. meant for Mozart to just step in and play, right? And you're not supposed to be the one who comes up with all of the things that you're going to say, because when you're in flow, Michelangelo and Mozart, like the music wrote them. That's the beauty of it. And then when you're listening to Steven Spielberg and he was telling Oprah about the, you know, about filming Schindler's List, he's like, you know, I had done The Color Purple, which is a black woman story. I had done Empire of the Sun, which is somebody else's story, right? An Asian story. And he goes, and I knew about the, the Schindler's List story. And I was like, oh, who am I to, it's so personal. You know, I'm Jewish to talk about the Holocaust. I don't know. I don't want to put this spotlight on myself. He goes, and then I decide, okay, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. And he said, and what's amazing is that was his first Oscar, which is hard to believe because he had done, he goes, I didn't shoot the movie. (laughs) I (laughs) didn't shoot the movie. He's like, I got to Poland. I was an emotional basket case, like standing in concentration camps. Um, I said to my wife, that's it. I had a panic attack. I'm like, I'm not gonna be able to shoot this movie. I can't even begin to understand how to tell this story. And he said, Kathy, not Kathy. That's so funny. I just said that. He said to (laughs) Oprah, Whoa, that was weird. He said to her every day, I kept coming home to my wife and saying, I wasn't there today. I'm promising you. I I moved the camera and it told me where the next shot was. There was a sunset at this moment. It was supposed to be raining. And next thing I know, I saw it. And And he goes, it was the most intuitive thing I've ever done. And I don't know how I did it. And I couldn't repeat it. Right. And the movie was supposed to fail because it was in black and white and it was about something so depressing. And it swept the Oscars. It won Best Director, Best Picture. But, you know, it's like it, it, it moved the world in such a way. And he didn't do it. He says, I promise. I kept feeling like I don't even understand what we're going to even shoot tomorrow. I have no preparation for it. <laughs> so it's just honeybees. They just get they just get led. They know how to make honey. It's just what we do. Mm-hmm. So you, you don't want me to sit here and give you advice on how to pre-sell the hell out of the book, even mm-hmm. though you will, and you can, and Susie's one of my best friends in the world, and mm-hmm. she's an amazing person and coach, and you'll figure that out, but it's time to set down this part that is kind of, there's a bridge and there's a, there's a gate on the bridge and it's saying you can't pass Yeah, and you're meant to. It's your thing, right? Yeah. So if you were going to just allow yourself to just be guided and get and and fully in service, Mm -hmm. right? What would that look like? What if you just played that tape? Mm -hmm. What do you want to be doing? Do you want to be doing these like events like Esther Hicks, where she just stands on the stage? Do you want to be like, one-on-one coaching? Do you want to be doing kind of what I'm doing? Do you want to be doing, I mean, we don't have to figure it out. It's going to kind of dance through you, but you might have a first sort of like, you you might have a little inkling of what you would really think your best, most gentle, effortless, ease-filled self. What is she doing? She's writing incredible stories and she's telling those stories. Like I, 
I do see myself on stage. Like I, I see, I, I, I shoot, I would be speaking, like it would be an event speaking at not one-on-one -on -one coaching that doesn't, that doesn't light me up, but seeing that light go off in other women and seeing that like speaking through my, you know, basically I do, I, my, all of my books have been channeled. So it's like telling that story is like how that even came about. Um, I gave, my first book is called Tilly Toad's Heavy Load. And it's about this little toad who his dad is a green toad. His mom is a brown toad. And he has these weird colored spots and he feels different. And it's about my boys because I'm in an interracial marriage. So and it's just this beautiful story. And I didn't write it, it just came to me. Like it came to me in a dream. And I gave a speech to 300 people with a, is in hospitality, because that's my background. Didn't have any, like you didn't have any slides. I threw some pictures on of the book so they could see it. And I was like, why is a children's author coming to talk to you today? <laughs> it's like, that's kind of weird. But I told like the story of Tilly and how that's my story. And like how, you know, it's all about you don't have to be your feelings like you can let go of that you can you know and so it's just and honestly I did it the week after my son had been in um in a psych ward because he had drug him it's just whole, that story you told the other day about um your friend or somebody who that's me I've been through that and we had to put him into rehab so but I stood on I didn't stand it was a, it was a virtual I I was able with all of that going on, I told this story and I didn't prepare for it. I didn't, I was just like, fuck it. I'm just gonna give this speech because quite frankly, it was paying me really well. So I was like, I'm just gonna do it. I have to do it. I can compartmentalize what's going on with my son and just do this speech. And it just came from me. Like I just prayed before I did it. And I was just like, guide me because I have no clue what I'm about to say. And it all came out and I just had the most amazing response that I've ever had from women who and men who were just like, wow, like it's a children's book, but you you taught me something today. So I think I, I, I do, you, yeah, that hit when you said like this thimble. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, that is so beautiful. And it's so funny when people say that, you know, we all say that I've said that and, and I mean it. I'm like, oh, I've never, you know, I didn't use slides. And it's like, think about Oprah standing up and using slides. Yeah. You would just go. Yeah. What? What's happening? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, think about any person you've ever heard speak, and then they like get out a clicker, like, and you're like, yeah. "Oh, you're that kind of a person. You have no resonance. You might have something smart to say, but in this moment, we're not having this real exchange. There's this very right. pre-planned, pre and not to say that we can't learn things from slideshows and things like that, because there's value to that." but mm -hmm. it's a different universe of value when someone yeah. just opens their heart yeah. and they go off script and they just decide to free fall with you in that moment. So yeah. what's very clear about what you just said very clearly is I want to be speaking. I want to mm -hmm. be speaking on stages and get paid to be speaking. You know, yesterday I saw a friend of mine and she says to me, Oh, I'm going to Sweden in October. <laughs> and every time I'm with her, she goes, Oh, I'm going to Ireland. I'm going to Bologna. I'm going to, Literally, this is what she does. And I said, Jesse, you are a match for this. And it's so fun to watch it because she, she, she does journalistic writing about art. So she gets mm. invited to like a tile show or a textile show and like freelances her whole thing and gets paid to travel the world. And I said, if somebody were to say to you, but how do you do that? Like, what do I do to do that? It's like, you, you, you are that like, she literally, that is it. She just exudes, I guess this is a full possibility without even thinking about it. And her life is that she gets paid to go around the world to the most exquisite hotels and places. So everything is in the field. Everything is done. There's nothing mm -hmm. that you, you know, it's all available. You've already even had experience with it. So if you were going to be a match for being asked to speak now all the time, energetically, vibrationally, where would you need to tune and change the dial so that it's so potent that you get the call and you mm. get the next call and the next call because you are it. And they just go, oh, you know what? 
let me ask her if she's available. Mm -hmm. What's, what does that feel like to ship <clears throat> that? And why is that scary? It's, it's, it feels amazing to, to state that and to, to see that. And what's, what's resisting, what's scary at the moment is I'm stuck in this, I'm not stuck. I put myself in this 30 hour a week that I'm doing as a contract, you know, with a hospitality, with Marriott hotels. So it's stopping me from being able to like, go, you know, hospital, like I've got so many contacts because I had a 25 year career in the hospitality industry. The speech I gave was to IHG, who's one of Marriott's. I know they are. Yeah. Right. And so that was like before I went back to Marriott. So it's a, it's, it's all like it. And I just did an Esther Hicks meditation before I came on here about money books and it's, a, it's financial. So like, my husband's a, a high school football coach, loves what he does. Like yeah. that's his. And so, I, you know, like I don't want anything different for him. He, he wants that. He loves yeah. it. And now yeah. he, he's fully supporting me. Like I was like, I don't know how we're going to pay for this mastermind, but I feel like I should do it. And he's like, you absolutely should do it. Like he wants to see me living my dream yeah. and doing yeah. what I want to do. So it's to the point of like my goal, I would love to be able to at the end of the year to walk away from that contract. I have a year's contract. They already want to, me to do another year. I don't want to do another year. I don't need to do another year. So, but it's like, that's the, res that's honestly the only, well, I don't know if it's honestly the only thing. That's one thing is that it's this like, I can't see how I can do that while I'm still doing this. Mm -hmm. But then I'm in this cycle where I'm stuck because if I don't, Make right. I mean, as, as complex as it comes across to us, it is always so simple in the sense that our ego craves certainty. Our soul wants the unknown. Yeah. I was watching a guy, you'll probably hear me <clears> say <throat> this one again, because it's another little thought I had yesterday, but we were sitting on the beach <clears> and I was watching this guy paragliding and I took a video of it and I thought, oh my gosh, isn't it amazing? how good it feels to let go of control mm -hmm. that's why he loves it that's yeah. why somebody wants to do whatever experience there's a level of like oh my god and i'm i'm okay and i took a risk to let go and then i get to feel this feeling of being held mm -hmm. without being hyper vigilant in my ego right and there's this like whoo there's a rush from that cuz yeah. really that's all we really want in our life it's like how can we get that rush day to day. It's like, well, you don't need to go paragliding. You could just trust. You could just trust reality, <laughs> actual <laughs> reality to come in and support you. So here's the thing though. It's like, you can still be in alignment and take the next half step, which is a stretch for you to trust. And you don't have to quit your job tomorrow, but mm -hmm. I don't see why we can't just pull in and allow in more and more opportunities over the next 60, 90 days, mm -hmm. who's to say that you wouldn't be able to do some things? Maybe it would work out. Maybe mm -hmm. you would make a certain amount of money and it would work out just to do one or two of them. And you would start to go, oh, if I did this kind of a thing. And also it's interesting how we have this thought you know, Seth Godin used to tell me this, like the other way that our ego shows up is like, for me to be fully aligned, there's no way I could teach marketing, right? Cause that's mm -hmm. what he does. But he wound up just being himself. And then these huge opportunities came within marketing that he showed up for as himself. And it turned into speeches about empathy. Mm -hmm. And then from there, it grew to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing until he, he vibrated so high that everything around him in the corporate world just vibrated out. And then he was just put into Seth Godin land, but mm -hmm. he was inside of a beast called, I help you as a creative director, help you understand how to market. And it just exploded. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you're already seeing that. And yeah there are things that happen where somebody is such a good ambassador for the company. You're so beyond what you did. You're an ambassador for the people even at the company that by you continuing to speak, 
you carve out a whole different way of being within this corporate environment. And I think about how many women inspire the world through keynote speeches who are really, they're not writing books or coaching like Sarah Blakely and Spanx has spoken a gazillion times at this point. Right. And so too, you know, Howard Schultz, who's a, a billionaire who makes, he's a CEO, but he spends a lot of time speaking and even consider running for president. So I don't know if it really is even a problem. It's mm. just a matter of being a match for it. And then right. the world, the universe, God, mm. the infinite decides how to line you up with it. Right. You don't need to worry about whether it's going to come this way or this way. And it has to, in your mind, be this way and not this way. Because it's like, <laughs> as long as you are standing in alignment and the abundance <clears throat> is coming in, we don't care what that looks like. And we trust it will get led to the TED talk. Does that make sense? That does make sense. Yeah. Colleen, what do you have to say? I know I've been talking a lot. Well, it's exactly that. And it's because it's our mind, right? It's like mind, body, soul. We've got our mind and our body down here in 3D. And we got our soul that we're connected to in 5D. And so it is like there's almost a stronger pull, right? To the mind, to the mind, to the mind, to the mind over and over again. And that's the work, right? That's the how is get out of the mind and connect in with the soul more. And we want to be like, no, but what do I need to do? Kathy didn't tell me what to do today. I'm no further ahead. Right. And it's like, <clears throat> but it's not the doing we think it's doing. It literally right. isn't. And the more we hear that and the more we can drop into that and the more we can fully embrace that and practice that connection point and keep coming back to that when the mm -hmm. ego goes, Oh, what do I need to do? You can be like, Oh, thanks for noticing that I'm back in, you know, my mind again. Let me just take this moment and just be mindful and just listen to the sounds in this room for 30 seconds, even right yeah. to bring your presence into the moment. Yeah. That's why it was a silly example, but I shared it on the mastermind. And by the way, I love when Abraham Hicks and she's like, I'm fixing up something in my house. I feel like she's always working on her house, right? She's like, we have this pipe, we have this pool, we have this thing. Um, <laughs> But she uses these like very simple things. And you're like, why is this interesting? And she's like, because you see how the pipe was it. So when I told that story about the mattresses and I wanted to get this table delivered, what was so fascinating to me, more than the fact that I was able to figure out how to actually get a table to my house out of the blue was the guy I talked to because yeah. he was this sweet black guy who we connected and he told me his whole story in 90 seconds because I said to him, your energy is so palpable. I was like, I would buy anything from you. What's your story? And he was like, right. oh my God, you have such a big heart. Actually, I'm leaving. My last day is next week. And he said, I started here 20 years ago in the stock room. And I just appreciated every person so much. I kept getting promoted, promoted. And now I've saved enough money. I'm opening my own store. And my boss is really supporting me too. And my last day is August 7th. And I thought, it's like, we have in front of us, you know, like the doors in front of you right now. And some people would have been like, great, I'm working at a mattress store and I'll never be this. I'll never. And he's like, my grandparents, my parents are so proud of me, you know, that I, you know, and I bought a home and he's like the table you're by, I just furnished my whole, you know, it's like, and it's just amazing. And it's just from loving every single second of everything I was doing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, you don't even have to decide that either. But my point is that we decide so much and it's then yeah. we get so upset and we get so stuck and we get so confused and we think, oh, I'm in a double bind. If I really had courage, I would leave my job tomorrow, but oh my gosh, I can't. And now I'm just like a ping pong ball inside my brain. <laughs> None of that has to be your job. Your job is I am available for my highest and best alignment. I'm so excited to speak over people. I can't wait for the next call to come in. If I start getting calls from the outside and I have this job and this project and this project, somehow, some way, either I'm going to wind up going to my boss and saying, can I work part-time or somehow, some way it's all going to be the right dates or somehow, some way I'm going to make enough money that it's going to like jump me over here. Or I might even get a promotion to work at a different job within my company. And then mm -hmm. from there, like it, none of it really matters. Mm -hmm. Right. What, what matters right now is what it's costing you to analyze what's not your business. It's yeah. not your business at all. Yeah. That part's not your business. Yeah. Yeah. That part's not your business.
Right. And it's amazing how we trust in the bigger things. Like on some level, every little girl kind of trusts that one day she'll meet her prince. Hmm. And that's so much more hard to analyze than this. It's like, wait, where am I going to meet him? Where do I have to be? What if I'm, right. no, 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 I better not leave the house in case somebody calls and sets me up with, oh no, I better not leave this bar and show up here every, it's like, how do you know where the person's going to come from? You don't know that you're going to marry that person. Right. You, you, like God knows your address, not you. That's not your job. You go do your thing, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. So I just say, get out of that part. And so now let's think about what you can feel called to do next, because the truth is even that's irrelevant, but where it is relevant is if we decide that your next step is reaching out to the people who hire speakers, which we could, let's say. So on LinkedIn, every company, and you probably already know this, but if you don't, there's a learning and development person at every company, Coca-Cola and Nike and every company, and they have a budget for hiring people to speak. Okay. That's my so, field. Yeah. 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 That's your field. I'm right. So you know, yeah. Yeah. So that's it. So it's like, we might decide that it feels like we're going to put it out there, right? That this is something that you're available to do. This is the topic. These are the three topics that you speak on. And you're so excited to have a conversation about whether or not it's a fit or what mm -hmm. they're looking for or what the next quarter looks like, <clears throat> you know, just something like that. And we can talk about how to actually write the best cold message because I'm really good at that. Awesome. And then why that matters, because the the world will bring it to you however it needs to. God is in control. But why that matters is you get to have something tangible to actually then practice mm -hmm. clearing the energy around. Yeah. And the more you do that, it might come from over here, but you just sent a signal like I'm here, I'm ready, I'm available fully, not just in my mind, but mm -hmm. 100% here. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It does make sense. And, and, yeah. And it's all that like that just gave like as you were saying that I get this huge like, oh, like it's scary. And that's I know exactly that that's what I need to be doing then. Right. Because if it scares me, then that's like that's you're dead on. Yeah, that feels. So let's talk about those people in learning and development up till this point. Have mm -hmm. you ever done that? Have you ever reached out to 10 people on LinkedIn or whoever else? and said, here's what I'm doing. And here's what I'd love to chat about. Not cold, not cold. I haven't. So through friends, I've, you know, cause I'm in learning and development. So I have friends in the industry. This is all like, duh. Bingo <laughs> game changer. <laughs> like what the fuck are you doing? Jay? Yeah, oh really? God. I'm like, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Go ahead. So yeah, I, through my friends, like who work in the hospital well one works in hospitality and the other's in a different industry I have pitched like they're like oh my god we could have you as our next corporate you know like at the next corporate event like we're, we're going to pitch you so I've written like a pitch with some of the topics I can talk about um so I've done that twice and it, you know they were like thanks but no thanks for right now I do think like as long as I'm not for right now as long as I'm not going hospitality I could pitch everywhere else because then they wouldn't have an issue with me right now because there is a contractual like I couldn't okay. go okay. back to IHG right now but but then I can once like all this clears and then I don't so you know. this this is really juicy and this is really um one of my areas of expertise because my whole world was really built way before I was coaching I was cold calling right I was mm reaching out to people cold. And so I really got great at that. And so let's talk about that for a second. Okay. And I'll say it this way first. If we are willing to be in our ego uncomfortable, you can have anything you want. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So every single day when I started the podcast, every single day when I started music writing, writing music for TV and film, both of those pursuits every day. I don't mean every day. And I'm really saying like once a week, I right. once a month, right? Every day I would get excited that I could find email addresses. I could find contacts. I could find people either through LinkedIn, or I could find people through 
it's so easy online because once you know the email format of a company, mm -hmm. you can go, okay, it's either c.heller at nike.com or it's Kathy Heller at nike.com or it's kathy.heller or it's Kathy H. At, there's yeah. only a few ways. <laughs> so what I used to do is I used to just find the name of the human mm -hmm. and then find some email of the company online. So I would just know the format. Is it nike.uk if I'm writing to this person? Like whatever it is. Right. And then I would put the kathy.heller at nike in the two and in the BCC, the other four options so that they, I don't look stupid, but one of them will get through and four will bounce back. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Then I would come up with an email that would be basically the email I would send to everyone, but the first line would be different. And the emails were always way more about starting, igniting a relationship with this person casually than the agenda to tell them what I was up to and see if they wanted to have a part of it. Okay. Because there's nothing warm going on. Right. And this person's not a machine. It's mm -hmm. a human. So human beings need to connect first. And everything is proximity. Everything is access. So it's like, you just said, well, I happen to know people. The point is, if you have access because you make a relationship with someone in one email exchange, then you could go to the next thing, which is, well, here's what I do. What do you do? To, you got it create a relationship. All you're really trying to do in a first email is, can there be just a little something personal, something connected, something EQ, emotional, like mm -hmm. the stick. So this person just wants to write back. Ooh, now they wrote back. Now maybe I can say the next thing. And then we kind of just inch our way to a conversation about what it really is. But we're not going to just like with a sale, we're not going to pitch the person who we don't know. Right because they don't want to be pitched to because they don't know us and they're being pitched to all day long. Mm -hmm. So when I would be willing to do this every day, I would always be able to find like 10 people and then I would let go of it. So I would assume to myself, most of these people might not write back. I might hear from two of these people by the end of the week. And then I would be so excited. Like, oh my gosh, I don't even remember that I wrote to Nickelodeon and Hasbro and whatever, but these two people, these two little bites, this one woman wrote me back, oh, how cute with an emoji. Or this one woman wrote me back, I'm making this up, but someone wrote me back, my wife's pregnant, she's not able to have sushi right now, she's really bummed. And I'm like, oh, there's a connection, right? right? So if we start doing that, just like that, where we're right, writing to a bunch of people and we're doing it, and I'll, I'll tell you more about what I think really works in a personable way, it throws people off guard in a good way. They're like, oh, this is such a different email that I usually get in my inbox. Mm -hmm. And this person is not here to ask me right away for something to do for them. Mm -hmm. There's just a little bit of like a connection being made. So eventually it just takes off on its own because once you get a couple people, then now you have work that begets more work and more work mm -hmm. and more work. And then at a certain point, you don't have to send those emails every single day because there's a momentum going on, right? Mm -hmm. So if you were to send these kind of notes, I believe you would be successful with this because you've already have validation, you have proof of concept, you've already done it mm -hmm. and you enjoyed it and the feedback was good. Yeah. So really what I used to think to myself is, if I, if I know that this podcast interview is gonna be beautiful and I need to get more guests when I was first starting, but why would I not send these notes? Mm -hmm. And the ego says, well, you're burdening someone. You're mm -hmm. bothering someone. It's like, why is it a bother? It's an email. We have unlimited data in our phones, right? And right. if I send it, especially in the way that I'll tell you that I send a note, it's lovely. It's just a note. They cannot respond if they want and they can delete it or they can respond. They have choice, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when I used to write music and I would think like, this music is coming from my heart and it's beautiful and it's good. You know, it's like, they're looking for me. Like right. those people in learning and development every day go to their job, looking to wow their boss yeah. by bringing in speakers, by doing things for the team that deepen the team's ability to really find meaning in work. Mm -hmm. And to take a leadership role. 
So they want to bring in all kinds of people. And if a company has a lot of women on staff, mm -hmm. wouldn't they think, oh, we're going to look really good if we take one moment out of our busy work schedule to just have this conversation. And if a company has a lot of men, wouldn't they look good if they said, you know what's going on in the world? We actually wanted to bring in a woman to talk about how, like either way you slice it, they look good. They mm -hmm. benefit. When my friend Jenny was cold calling delis before she went to Shark Tank and won all of this money, she thought of it like, if I have vegan corned beef, the deli owner is going to benefit right. because to <clears throat> have something like that on the menu shows the people who come in with their one vegan friend, which everybody has like the one vegan friend, we're actually awake. We're cool. We're cutting mm -hmm. edge. We have something for you. You don't have to go somewhere else. Right. So she knew I'm doing you a favor. Right. You're doing them the favor. Favor. Yeah. So we can, you know, tease that out a little bit more, but if we know that there are people literally every single day in learning and development who have a budget and here's the other thing, they have to spend it. Yeah. Right. Because the way you know this, and I now know this, you know, you, you're going to pay a certain amount of taxes. And so the, right before the end of the year, my, my um, accountant will say, what's in your office right now? Do you need any furniture? Do you need another computer? Like buy something right before December. You, you need to buy it because you need to get the right off anyway. So they have to spend a certain amount of money. I used to think that about music people, right? Which is they have a music budget for this show, which they have to spend. Mm -hmm. So they're looking for me. They're looking to find the song that's really good that the director goes, oh, you made a good choice on that scene. I liked it, right? Mm -hmm. And she was easy to work with too. Let's bring her back. Right. You're going to get repeat business. Mm -hmm. So how does that feel? It feels good. It feels, yeah, it feels really, it feels good. I'm processing, but yeah, it's, it feels, it feels good. I think, yeah, I've just got to get out of the control. Like I've totally got to get out of the control of like my, between that, like, I guess, like, between now and September, I, I also would see, like, I want to be pitching the book, because I don't want to let that go, in terms of, like, giving it a good shot to get out, um, so I'm just, like, mentally now, I'm thinking through my, like, my time, if I'm, I am committed to, I have to do these 30 hours, because I can, I can get the stuff done, but like I have a limited amount of time. So, but I guess finding, writing pitches and doing stuff for the book and getting that moving. And then maybe this is like, you know, October, I work on the speech, the speech side of it. I don't know. That's. that's I'll make it really easy for you. <laughs> it's not about time. You're just scared, first of all. And second of all, you just have your blinders on because the best way to sell books is at an event. Yeah, that's true. When I was selling my book, my number one goal was to speak at public events, right? At corporate events and to say, oh, I'm going to make this real easy for you. Yeah. Part of how you're going to pay me is you're going to pay me this much less and you're going to buy a thousand books. <laughs> yeah. And they did. Part of how you're going to pay me is you're going to invite me pay me this. And then you're going to let me set up a table where I'm going to sign these books afterwards or part of how you're going to pay me it. I mean, yeah, that is how you move books. Yeah. Let's ask anybody who has when, wanted to hit the New York times list. Yeah. You need to get events going where the book is part of the event. It's part of the, or it's like this, you know, you people buy the book and that's their ticket to the event. It's always wrapped in that's with an event. That's per, yeah, that's what I was because that's where I could do it that way with because with self publishing, I don't it's print on demand. I don't have like tons of copies of the book to sell. Right. And that would be an investment. I'd have to go do that. But like, that's a great I love that. Like buy a, you know, a ticket and, and not only that a ticket to the event, not only that, but when you are starting to speak, 
between now and you you allow that fear to go go sort of in in this other way and dissolve and you step forward every time you speak you're going to say I have a book and you guys can get it at this link. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so yeah. you don't need an influencer who doesn't because this is also how much enthusiasm that has. I just got this book this one I don't know and I posted it on a story for 15 seconds. Go buy it. So what? Yeah. Okay. Or you come and speak to me for 45 minutes and, and you say, you and I wrote it. this book and everybody goes, let's go buy it right now. Right. Yeah. And yeah. Maybe you like say that. at the end of every speech, I wrote this book. And if you buy this book to follow up from this talk, if you send me a screenshot of your book, however you want to do that, the receipt, the whatever. I'm going to do a follow-up Q and a with everybody who buys the book on such and such a date and you can come to it. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Like literally that here's what it. happens when yeah. we get scared, <laughs> the clarity goes away. Right. Yeah. And then when you just said to me, well, I just don't have that much time. Well, how much time does it take to cre create? And we'll talk about this a little bit more, a five line email, five yeah. line email, copy and paste it. <laughs> and send it to 10 people a day. No, it's time even if you were really <laughs> slow, right? You're the little, you're the sloths in <laughs> utopia. Like the longest <laughs> that's gonna take you is maybe 11 minutes. And if you're fast, you can do it in six minutes. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. No, I so love that. And I'd love to tell you what you can write in those five lines, but this is what has to happen is the fear when you see it just with it's just humor, just be like, there it is. Yeah. And now I'm right back in, I've got a thimble and that's as much as I can handle. That's my biggest. And I love that analogy. Like that's my, that's what I'm going to, that's what it's going to be in my head. It's like, it's me walking around with this little thimble. Like, and that's, <laughs> that's, and I, one of my freaking children's books is called take that fear. And it's all about the voice of fear and all, you know, so it's like, I, I, yeah. And I can do that. This has been awesome because I was ready to go the route of like, you know, sending all, you know, doing all these special things, sending books to influencers. And now it's like, why would I, why would I do that? Cause that's really great to know the other side of that. Um, so thank you. That's awesome. And yeah, like that's exactly how I, that's how I got a boost in sales with my Tilly book was through the IHG speech. People went and ordered it. So yeah. And it was interesting because in your kickoff form, the thing that I kind of noticed is it's almost like you have this pressure, like if this launch doesn't have like a sensation, I'm hooped. Yeah. I'm like, the book's not going anywhere. Right. Do you know what I mean? That, yeah. Like, yeah, it's okay. Like, sure, it's great when you can debut on the bestseller list, but are we in that situation right now? Well, fuck, I don't know what you'll align with, but like it doesn't matter. What matters yeah. is you are in a space and in a capacity where you can just love this book into people's lives. Like that's it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and it doesn't so have to be, Oh my God, if it doesn't happen in September, like it's a, it's a failure. Yeah. Like, no, it can yeah, happen so. every month ongoing. I, all yeah. That's, I think it's all it, now like seeing it, like being reflected back to me, it's totally about control around money. It's about fear of money and, and all of that and not being able to see forward. But again, it's like getting in the space of like allowing that to come to me and allowing. Well, that's what's so fascinating, right? Colleen and I have this conversation all the time is like, we sit with women who are so extraordinary and they're fighting for their resistance and we're fighting for them. Mm -hmm. And we're like, set it down. Yeah. Like every time I would tell myself, Literally, when I started pitching music, I want you to picture me living in this cute little townhouse in Beverly Hills, and I had a baby, my first one, and I didn't have a nanny or any help. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, she's asleep for hopefully 45 minutes, right. maybe an hour. I'm going to pitch right now. And I would think to myself, on the other side of these emails is $100,000. Mm -hmm. I can't afford to not pitch these people. And I have a beautiful, genuine heart. And these mm -hmm. songs come out of that. And when I go to the studio, even my drummer and my co-writer were like, every time we're with you, we feel washed in this, like, you know, they would feel that, like, it was like going to church for the day, but we were in the studio, yeah. you know? Yeah. So it's like, how could I deny that whole wave to happen? I couldn't. 
So I would sit there with no time and no help and no idea of how, and I would send it and send it and send it. Yeah. So, so if you weren't scared and we could allow this blessing in, <laughs> then what? That's it. You, yeah. Colleen, do you have anything to share? Because I know you can see exactly what's what's here, can't you? Maybe yeah. you can reflect that to her, what you see. There is such a beautiful warmth and accessibility that your energy has for people that there's a strength to it, but there's a softness to it. You know what I mean? It's both those pieces yeah. together. And so it's so disarming for people for them to just exhale and be, <laughs> you, do, you feel like a bear hug. Do you know what I mean? Like the, right, the bear is like the perfect like yeah. part of the book for you. Cause that's what it, it's just this space where it feels very safe to be around you. Right. Like, and just yeah. very, oh, there's no judgment here. Like it just, it's, it's clean in that way. Right. To experience you. Mm -hmm. And so it is such a gift, right. For people who can be washed over by whatever words are coming out of your mouth. That's the thing too. It doesn't even really, I mean, the people who are booking think it matters what the heck you're talking about, but it doesn't matter what you're talking about, nor do the people in the room even really care, but it's because when you can drop into that resonance, which you can do, and you know, yeah. you did that time, yeah. that's your gift, right? And yeah. It's yeah, thank you. I love that the tears are coming because it lets me know that your soul is hearing this right now. This is an acknowledgement from self, from alignment, from soul. But this is really the conversation we've been having. And one beautiful thing I can maybe add is when you see someone standing in their greatness, JFK, Dr. King, Oprah, Serena, I don't care who the person is, you see someone just fully aligned. It's not for them. They are an ambassador yeah. in that moment on behalf of this collective, because there's just one of us. It's just one world. When you zoom out and you look at us all, like the circle of life, the whole animal kingdom, all of us here, the lakes, the rivers, this beautiful blue planet, the, the whole field of energy, the infinite, you know, that's why I wear these two circles. Oh. It's just this oneness, right? How would we ever come through this journey? and not rise on behalf of the collective. Like mm -hmm. that's where we are. Yeah. So how beautiful. does that feel to do that? It feels lovely. It feels like that's, I feel calm, like there's tears, but I feel like I know this is what I'm supposed to do. And I know it's like, I need to just let go and just, and just go with the flood, like the river situation when you talked about the dolphins and like, I realized I've been standing by the river looking for like, what's the best way to catch the current? Like, how do I put my toe in? And it was like, just fucking jump in and just go. And yeah, I'm ready to, that's why I signed up for this. That's why I have no clue how. And, and the, the wonderful thing is I have a husband who is fully behind me. He seems adorable. Anybody who wants to be a high school coach, I'm like, you're just, yeah, obsessed. yeah. This is the thing is like, I've been saying to my husband and he's finally hearing me. I said, you make people laugh. Yeah, he does. He's hilarious. And I say to him, I go, <clears throat> so that's not about you. Mm -hmm. And you're not allowed to keep that to yourself. I stop it. Get out yeah. of the way. God didn't yeah. give you an ability to come up with the way you say things for you, you know? And it's right. always been this thing of, I don't need to be big. I'll be grateful for what I have. Like, that's always the drum he beats. And it's like, right. except that's your ego too. Right. That's, that's about you and what you're comfortable with. Yeah. And so he's starting to get it. And I'm like, make people laugh and just move the hell on. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. God, do we need laughter right now? And yeah. when I think about what you've been through, I'm like, it turns to such wisdom when you get up and speak. Yeah. Because everyone can relate to a feeling of darkness. Yeah. And then what we don't always relate to 
is moving through it. Yeah. Seeing it through different lenses, you know, and that's, that's, that's all you have to know, but it's amazing. Isn't it? That even Colleen and I right now, really all we're doing and we're, we're articulating it in, in, in different layers, but really that's all we're saying to you. Yeah. When somebody can come in and go, whoa, all of this is possible or all of right. this is okay. Or all, but they really have embodied it. It's right. like, it's, it's health. All of a sudden you're like, you get a shot of like, you know, I'm good. Yeah. So, um, so let's talk now about Colleen. Why don't you give her a couple concrete steps that she can start to look at doing between now and the next time that we meet? Yeah. Well, so first thing, like Kathy said, take some time to go. I like to use a spreadsheet because it keeps it organized. Like who are these outreach contacts? And you can, you don't have to find a gazillion at once. You can just find 10 the first day. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Whatever feels good to you, right? Whatever yeah. feels ease filled. I would, they are going to be operating more from ego state, if you will. So right. sometimes when we pitch, our topics need to make sense to them for them to hear them. When we get to that point, we're going to talk for a minute in a second about Kathy's brilliance of how you craft that email, but those actual topics. Okay. When you pitched last time, Mm -hmm. what, what topics did you pitch? What are you normally telling people you talk about? Um, Talk about this, the book. So the the Tilly book is like having the power to change your thoughts um, and through it, through the lens of a child, but like learning to like see that for yourself. And then the other pieces is for working moms and talking through how to you know, back to the Jotopia piece, like, how do you find your own happiness? How do you like, no matter what you've got going on with your world, like, how can you find those gems that will, you know, get you to the next step? And when you spoke on stage, what, I mean, energetically, we know what came through you, but what positioning did you have that day when you shared? Like, what did I, what was my message? Mm-hmm. It was, it was around letting go of the saying, I feel exhausted. I feel this, I feel that. And letting, taking that word feel out and, or, or sorry, sorry, the other way around saying like, I'm exhausted, I'm stressed, I'm this, I'm that, you embody it. And so it's like taking, putting the word feel inside of it, like then allows you to do something with that feeling. So it's, it's all about changing, like changing the lens, looking at it from a different perspective and not embodying what you're saying if that makes any sense. I'd have to go back and actually, because honestly, I was in a complete, I, I, I don't know how I did that. I have no idea how I did it. So I'd have Isn't to Isn't that back. the best? That's why it yeah. feels so good. Yeah. And I have, I mean, I have like legitimate testimonials of like, that I can use that were just like, wow. Cause something. And can changed. I just say this? I was just watching Sandra. I think, I think she calls herself Sandy Bullock, but I was called Sandra. Anyway, she was talking to so-and-so and I forgot who about because it was like a little one minute Instagram reel. She's like, every single time I walk on set for the first time on a new movie, I have the same butterflies because I have no idea again what I'm doing. (laughs) And she said, and that's what makes me a great actor because I'm going to go through the same process of not being planned, not being rehearsed, feeling scared, and then listening in the moment and responding in the moment which is why when you see me cry, when you see me react, it's because it's so real, like on the blind yeah. side, when she's like, you know, brought to tears, she's like, because I have no idea. I, if I planned it, I wouldn't be a good actor. I wouldn't be real in the moment. So I love hearing her say that she goes and it never stops. No matter how many movies I've done, every time I go, here I go again, scary. Don't know <laughs> what I'm going to do. Don't know how this is going to go. And that's the moving out of the way. And that's where Rabbi Aaron's clip I posted today. And he said, if, if God is unlimited, there's no place where God isn't, mm. which means we are part of the video game called God. <laughs> Newsflash, we are it. We are part of it. Right. And he says, and we are the better part of it. Why? Mm. Because God, outside of the human aspect, cannot do anything but good because it doesn't have free choice. It doesn't have free will. But the part of God that can take a risk is us <laughs> because <laughs> we bump up against the, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do today. Right, and then we right. go and let's just go wheels up. Right. Yeah. That's how I run a retreat. That's how you do that. I mean, we don't know what and we're doing. Yeah. That's what's and so that's stimulating. It would be so boring yeah. to have everything planned and rehearsed. You'd be so unfulfilled. 
And that's why my, like every time my kids, my husband remind me, like when I was about to do something, even with, with my L and D role and the leadership role, like I would never prepare and I would be this like, oh my God. And then I do really and look well. where it led you. Amazing. Yeah. And, and every time my husband's like, you do this, Joe, that's what you do. Like let go of the, like, cause every time I'm beating myself up, I should have prepared. I should have. And he's like, yeah, yeah you should have. Yeah. So, Colleen yeah. was just saying that one of the things that she appreciates about this role is like, it's so varied, you know, it's like Mm -hmm. today I said to her when she does a retreat, she's legitimately equivalent to a wedding planner because you're planning an event with linens and flowers and food. I mean, it's it's, the only difference is we're not, there's no nuptials being exchanged, but it's it's a, it's a wedding. And she's like, and I love it because there's so many moving parts and nothing's ever the same and no days like the day before. And it's stimulating because it's, it's so boring when it's like, Mm -hmm. this is what you're going to do every day. Same Mm -hmm. thing. Can't do that. Yeah. Because that's called, I'm not going to grow today. That's right. the yeah. guaranteed there is no growth. But when we get a little bit nervous and your heart starts to race, you're like, oh, what will yeah. I experience today? Yeah. That will be so satisfying. Yeah. yeah. I have no idea. Like the retreat starts Monday. <laughs> I don't know what the opening is. I don't know what the, I, I know that there's a lunch at some point, you know, <laughs> it's like, and, and, and I know that I'm there to just be really, really the most loving vibration I can. And, and we'll, we'll, we'll do fine. It'll be spectacular. I know. I can't wait. Are you coming Monday? Yes, yeah. she is. I know. <laughs> I know some of you are going to be there. I didn't know exactly who, but Colin yeah, was. I'm coming. Yeah. I'm excited. Um, okay. So I think between now and the next time Colleen is going to check in with you and you're going to also have a VIP day with us on Voxer where we'll go back and forth for the whole day as long as as many times you want. I think between now and the next time we're going to set down the thimble, (laughs) open up this infinite well, yeah, and we're going to invite the world to drink from it. Okay. Yeah. And one thing that we're going to do is reach out to people in learning and development, which is going to be so easy for you. (laughs) You are it. And this is the way that I craft emails. And again, you've been inside of it, but I know this is not intuitive for most people, but I usually do it like this. I create a subject line that has nothing to do with the email so that people Mm. are like "Mm, spicy tuna rolls and pumpkin lattes. What is this from this person that I don't know? Something that I say in the email that has nothing to do with why I'm emailing, I put in the subject line. I always start out with something that establishes a little bit of a personal connection. So I'll say something like, hi, Joe, my name is Kathy. I have three daughters. When I'm not listening to the Frozen soundtrack, um, I, if I was you, I would say, I speak on stages about Mm da-da-da-da-da. I hope you're, and I always then call it into something we're both sharing. So I hope you're having a good summer. I just took a trip to, you know, where I'm, I'm on my way to Los Angeles mm-hmm. and uh, super excited to get a little tinsel town. Have you gone anywhere fun this summer? Question mark. Mm-hmm. I would love to chat with you about um, collaborating on any kind of, however you say it, educational, you know, mm-hmm. I have a little, you know, I have a few topics I speak on. And then I would ask something very specific that's personable, that has nothing to do with anything, something like, just curious, since I'm always wanting to learn and grow, do you have a really good recommendation for a book? I'm going to take it on the plane with me. I've been looking for something Mm. in case you need one. Have you read, literally, this is me, Joe, in cold emails. (laughs) The person's like, we're not friends. Why is she talking? And it's like, oh, because it works. Because we are friends. You just don't know yet. (laughs) You just don't and then it. I'm like, my favorite recently was, you know, Abundance by Deepak Chopra or The Only Woman in the Room, which is fiction, but it's historical fiction. So good. Then I always say, would love to hear your suggestion. No rush on reply. Mm. Have an amazing week. Awesome. So this long of an email. Yeah. I then take that same exact email. And the only thing I change is, hi, Joe. And it's like, hi, Colleen. Right. Same thing. I'm a mom of three kids. When I'm not doing this, I da 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 da. It can be anything, you know. Right. I live in the UK. When I'm not doing this, I da 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 da. It's like you're just establishing who the hell am I? Yeah. And then I wanted, you know, I hope you, and then something that we both share, like if it's just after, you know, uh, Halloween or I'm trying to think what you guys would, I don't know how much you guys celebrate that there or Christmas I mean, I, or 
yeah I'm in Atlanta but from yeah well, you're but in yeah. Atlanta and you just have this accent and I have decided know. like she's in the UK no, I'm from the UK that- yeah I want to get back there so yeah. but whatever it is like something that just connects us you know if it was the day after the inauguration it was like oh did you you know Mm-hmm. Anything that we all are in in sharing, I, I, you, yeah. know, but you can talk about the summer, you know, hope you have yeah. a good summer. We just went here. Have you done anything fun? And then one sentence once, but what I never included, this is, I still do this, whether I'm reaching out to sponsors right now for the retreat or I'm reaching out initially for music people, I would never say to the music person at Sony, hi, Melissa, my name is Kathy Heller. I write music. I write this kind of music and da, 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 and I've done these kind of things. And I've been impressive because no one's impressed. Right. Yeah. Not impressive because yeah. it's, they're getting that all day long. It's yeah. kind of like you get white noise about it. It's like boring, boring, boring. Mm-hmm. Right. But yeah. if it's a little bit of this back and forth, you go, that was a cute email. I get all right. these boring emails. And then you go. So what I would sometimes get is the answer to my silly question. I'll be like, <laughs> have you read this? And then I would be like, yes. And then I would go yes. And it, and find like a link to a YouTube video with that author. Or if uh, I said, what's if I, so with them, I used to say, what, so, what music, what CD are you playing right now in your car? That's what I used to mm. say. And they'd say, Joni Mitchell, the re the reimagined version of this. And then I would say, have you heard this song? And they'd be like, yeah, it's so good. And then the next email, when we would do that little exchange, I would say, would you love, you know, I would love to chat. Do you have five minutes? Mm-hmm. I think that this could be a really good fit. And I want to know more about your initiatives and how yeah. I might be able to help whatever you wanted to accomplish this quarter. Mm. Where I, I used to say, I'd love to know what songs you need and how maybe I could help tell whatever stories you're telling. And then awesome. people would be like, she seems like a human. She seems nice enough. She's decent. Let's talk. Does that make sense? That makes total sense. Yeah, I love it. I'm excited. I'm really excited to, and like now I'm laughing, like I could totally do that. Like I don't have time. Yes, you do. <laughs> like it's five yeah. lines and it's like copy paste. Yeah, no, that's and awesome. Remember it. That key piece Kathy said before is non-attachment to hearing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You can yeah. track it only just so you know, oh, did I reach out to that person before or right. do I want to follow up? But it's released. It's it yeah. doesn't matter because you don't have to control how it's going to find you. Okay. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And the That's thing perfect. is, what I always remind myself is it has nothing to do with me. It's not mm-hmm. personal. Like if someone goes, what a dumb email or it's boring or I have no time or, oh, like they don't know me. It's not like right. my sister being like, not writing your back. Like if I haven't right. heard back from her in 30 days, go, where are you? Why are you right. ghosting me? Like something's right. up, right? Right. If you write to 11 people a day and you wind up hearing back from two by Friday, okay. Like right. <laughs> it's not about you. They're busy. <laughs> they've got a cat they have to take to the vet. They've got work on their desk. They've got this, they've got that. They don't know you from Adam. They don't need to write you back. Yeah. Let them, let them have their process. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you. This has been amazing. So let's give you a goal, a tangible goal, just for the kicks of it. Colleen, what do you think would be fair? And when do you want her to do it by? Well, I know you are at the retreat next week. However, (laughs) I would say by August 15th. Okay. So that gives you basically, you know, two, two good weeks. Yeah. I think you should have reached out to somewhere between 50 and 65. I want you to aim for it. Okay. 50 to 65. Awesome. And you're going to come up with that. I, I actually, if you want help with it, I'm available. Thank DM you. me that five, six line email and I'll tweak okay. it. Fantastic. Thank you. And then you're literally just going to go like, and what I would, what I used to do is sometimes I would just put into Google. What I would have written was broadcast producer Ogilvy and Sachi and Leo Burnett, because the broadcast producers were the people who might have something to do with choosing a song for an ad. In your case, you could write learning and development, Mm -hmm. Nike, learning and development, Victoria's Secret learning there's no end and then what will happen is in Google one of the first two or three responses will be someone on LinkedIn but I just Mm -hmm. find that that's so helpful and there's never a shortage and some companies don't call it as you know learning and development but it might be someone else who's in charge of choosing that person it might be somebody else in 
I don't know, you would, you would know this, you would literally know <laughs> what division, because then sometimes let's say Carol who works in, I don't know what, what HR, let's say Carol uh, yeah. who works in HR got a really sweet email from you. Mm -hmm. She might say, I'm not the person, but Stephanie down I the hall it. is the person. Well, when Stephanie gets your email, she likes you already because Carol sent you. Right. That's actually sometimes how I would get work is because I would find the person who's not the person because what the person who then receives from their colleague thinks is, oh, this person's already in. She's vetted. Right. Yeah. My colleague is telling me work with her. Mm -hmm. And then I would like parachute in to the big office because yeah. I actually didn't go direct to that person. That's how I got so the energy. Yeah. yeah, there you go. So that's yeah. why you don't need to worry about finding 50 or 60 emails, you can probably find 300 or 400 or 500 because you're just trying to find people who work in the space mm -hmm. that have proximity to this woman or this guy who makes the choice. And you're going to come up with, so you're in the next few days, even by the end of the day, you need to come up with that little email. Timeline, yeah. Send it to me. And then you're just going to go to town and we're going to know that every time we speak, we sell books. Yeah. That's it. I love that. That's, I love that. And we get paid. Yes. And we free fall and touch lives because who's willing to give that kind of talk? That's the best. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you. So DM you through um, Instagram. Yeah. With the sure. Thing. Yeah, absolutely. I'll, awesome. I'll see it. Fantastic. I'm ready. This has been fantastic. Thank you so much. I enjoyed this session so much because every session is similar in the sense that like there's only fear and love and all of that but I love the specifics when people say I really want to do this and then it's like great well here we go and don't you feel I mean I feel it like in this moment it seems like we've just created a runway for this plane like, totally. I don't see anything on the runway that's blocking us do you no, I, mean, no. you know I mean it's like yeah we could still come up against the fear of it but really like we just kind of laid it out this was an easy one and you've yeah. already done it. It's not even like you've never done it. Like you, I know. you loved it. They loved it. Kumbaya. Like, I mean, yeah. let's go. Yeah, let's just go. Yeah, you're so right. It's time to stop hiding and put my thimble down. I love that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, you gave me strength today. You really mm. gave me strength today. I love you and I love your message. And you you reminded me of just that free fall and how important it is and great it is. And I'm just, I'm just, I'm so here for it. And I, I know that by November at our next retreat, you're going to say, well, here's what's happened. <laughs> I can't wait. I I'm staying. I'm, I'm just, I'm putting it out there in Bella. I'm staying at the hotel. Like, cause oh, yeah, you are. Malibu, I'm not, you know, like I'm staying, I'm sharing a room with Megan and all that. I'm like, no, the next, the November I'm flying first class, flying first, first class and I'm staying in the hotel. Like, hell it's yeah, done. you are. And if you had to choose which one of the places to stay at, yeah, the Bel Air staying in Hotel Bel Air, cause it's life changing. Yeah. And <laughs> also I just want to end by saying, this is the greatest thing you do for your kids, right? Yeah. yeah. You embodying that you can really invite in the greatest expansion and show yeah. up for wow you know does that then there's no secrets in a family system so then that that really gives them the possibility of oh I see I don't That's, need to be afraid because we don't we don't teach our kids we our kids learn not by what so, we, yeah it's, it's what's absorbed yeah and they're gonna That's, absorb this that's I just told Colleen at the beginning my 12 year old he called 911 back in because he wanted to commit suicide. Like that's what we've just been through, but like he's seen this change in me. And so he's like, he's like, mom, you're talking with Kathy Heller today. Like he sees it and he, and he's like so freaking excited for me. And he sees like, he sees the expansion in me and I see it in him. And like, it's just this beautiful. Like he's now like, well, I want to write a book or I want to do that. Like he's yeah. So that's, yeah. that's not a small thing, right? That's probably no. the biggest thing that we've just said on this call. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, we all know uh what we need to do, and then we need to just get out of the way and let God take it, you know, let yeah. it be simple. Let yeah. it be like Steven Spielberg being like, I don't know where the shot's gonna come from. And I have a really 
giant amount of pressure on me for so many reasons. The studio gave me $19 million. I want to tell a really important story and I just got to get out of the way. Yeah. As something this special, it already is, it's already done. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, we'll see you Thank on you. Monday. Can't wait. <laughs> this was great. Thank you. Thank you, Colleen. Thank you so Bye. much. Bye. Thanks.